What's up guys? This is DDP. Yes, and it is Harper. She's in a little bit of a better mood today, so we'll hope for the best there. But we have a Mavs post game. Another Mavericks victory. The keyboard's not there, sweetie. There's nothing to bang on. All right, well, you do you. So yes, we have a 143-130 Mavericks victory over the New Orleans Pelicans. This makes it four straight for the Mavericks. And we had a couple of just superstar performances from Luka Doncic and Kristaps Porzingis. Luka Doncic sets a new career high with 46 points, adds in 12 assists and 8 rebounds as well on 17 of 30 shooting. 5 of 8 from 3, 7 of 9 at the line with a block and a steal. And all around, trying to get in the way, hog the spotlight. It's alright, they like you better than me anyway. Ah, there you go, sit on the desk. An all around great game from Luka. But you had things getting off to a quick start with Kristaps Porzingis. Dude was a flamethrower to start the game. Attempted nine threes in the first quarter. In the first quarter quarter but to his credit the dude knocked him down he goes eight of 14 from three a career high eight made as you spit up on my hand a career high eight made three pointers for Porzingis and in 32 minutes he gives you a whopping 36 and seven gets you a block as well in there so KP you know, some of those rebounds came late. Like, it's not a big rebounding number, but he did have to contend with Zion and with uh, Steven Adams. So, a little bit of consideration there. The big thing for Dallas in this game, other than those two just bawling out, was the three-point shooting. The Mavericks set a new franchise record with 25 made three-pointers in this game. Think that's crazy? They shot 56% on threes. They went... 25 of 45 from three. Absolute video game numbers there. And that's really the difference in this game. The Mavericks three-point shooting was electric, and it allowed them to capitalize on it because they beat the Pelicans by 13 in a high-scoring game. And a big part of that comes down to just the stellar three-point shooting. What I also loved is how well they took care of the ball. Only six turnovers in the game. Now, you shoot 58% from the field, 56% from three with 25 makes. You're going to win a lot of those games. The rebounding battle, about even, 38-37 in favor of the Pelicans. But there's a whole, whole lot here to like about the Mavericks' quality performance. And uh, it, it's obscene how good that the shooting was. Now, is, is this a, an every-game snapshot? <coughs> yes. Are, are you trying to poop right now? All right, well, I'll keep an eye on that. Um, <laughs> it is obscene how good the shooting was last night, but is that something you can rely on every game? Is that something, is that, something that you can make a certain bet of that that's just going to be the case every night? I don't know. I don't know. It's... Uh, you know, we've seen how this team has struggled at times this year. We've had the extreme in both directions where everything's working and where nothing's working. And the, the truth has to be in that middle ground. We're going to pause this as I check on this. And then I'm going to come back probably solo. But we'll figure that out. Hang tight. Okay, diving back in. She's patrolling the area now, but my wife's keeping an eye out. So in this, Luka Doncic... Insane. The Mavericks shooting insane, but the truth has to lie somewhere in that middle ground. I still think this team needs a trade. The necessity of a major, major blockbuster, talking like seven-player trade, like the KP trade a couple years ago, or you know, previous to that, um, a deal like Rafe LaFrance, and I think Van Exel was part of that same one. It's been a while since I've revisited that. That's at the literally uh, pretty much inception of my Mavs ride or die fandom so it's it's been a while since i've revisited that but a, a major multiplayer trade there's some things that they need to fix and i'm still convinced those things need fixing and that the current roster composition might not be enough but they are progressing they are 
trending back towards what they need to be. Just, what, nine days ago, they were like 14th in the West, the like sixth worst record in the NBA, and people were like, ha ha, now the, now the Knicks are going to get a great pick out of it, and you know this is, this is going to be a disaster. It, it wasn't. It, it's not. Like, just with this four-game winning streak and winning five of six now, the Mavericks have moved into a tie for ninth place, and they have the 14th best record in the NBA. So just in that little movement, that one basically just over a week, you've flipped now to where you're on the cusp. And even then, you're still very much in the thick of things. A couple more game notes here. This is from Bobby Corella on Twitter. He points out that Luka Doncic now has as many 30-point, 10 assist, 30 point plus, 10 assist plus um, games in a Maverick uniform at 24 as every other player in franchise history combined. So you take every player other than Luka in Mavericks history, stack all of their 30-plus point, 10-plus assist games together. It's 24. Luka by himself has 24. Yeah, yeah, he's what, 22? He's good, he's good. Or he's still, I think, 21 turns 22, or did he just have a birth? I forget. I, that stuff's not super important to me. The point is, he's stupid young, and he's easily going to surpass that. So that's a, that's a remarkable thing there. I talked earlier about the three-point shooting in this game. The Pelicans, for the last two games, they have been absolutely torched. The last two games, they have allowed 48 made threes, which is the most in a two-game span in NBA history. 25. Actually, you know what? It's 50 now. Yeah, because this says 25 in their last game and 23 so far tonight. The Mavericks made 25 last night. So that's from ESPN Stats and Info. 25 and 25. They allowed 50 made three-pointers against them in a two-game span. That's something. I mean, you got to make the shots, but... Something's going on there. It's it's either the most bizarre misfortune for them, just running into two teams that for some reason shot red hot, or it's a matter of something they're doing as far as they're closing out, they're rotating well and sticking uh, sticking to their man. So definitely a lot to consider there. Other standout performances in this game, you get 14 from Dorian Finney-Smith, and what I loved about it was Dorian... We know, we know what he can do on the hustle end, how he can make all these slashes to the basket and everything. He was four of five on threes. That's big. When you're getting four out of five shooting from Dorian Finney-Smith on threes, you're going to be in a good position. You also get 13 off the bench from Jalen Brunson on four of five shooting, two of two from three. Again, quality from him. He gets you 13 points, seven assists, six rebounds. That is phenomenal off your bench. Uh, other guys standing out, Richardson with 11. He, his night was a little more ho-hum, 3 of 6 shooting, 1 of 3 from 3. But he gets you 11 as well. Um, and, you know, Hardaway, Hardaway had actually had a quiet performance with 8 points off the bench, 3 of 8 shooting, 2 of 6 from 3. But that's fine. They've got a lot working for them right now, and that is what they need. So let me jump back into these notes here. A couple notes here as well. Luka Doncic became the, let's see, fewest games to reach 4,000 career points in the last 40 seasons. Michael Jordan with 134 games, Shaquille O'Neal with 154 games, and Luka Doncic as of last night with 159 career games. Fastest, third fastest ever to 4,000 career points. That's major trajectory there. That is insane. The, to me, the prettiest play of the night, and I wish I could have made it the thumbnail, is Luka shooting. He actually did, a, did it off a spin move, but Luka almost in perfect lockstep with the Dirk silhouette one-legged fade, knocking down. It was just a stunningly beautiful shot, uh, and that was the point where you're like, there's not going to be a slip tonight. They've got this. I think the Pelicans never got closer than 10 in the fourth quarter. Dallas just absolutely ran them, but Luka doing that, I mean, it was still like eight or nine minutes left in the final quarter, and Luka is just putting on a clinic. Knocks down a step back three, uh, hits that ridiculous spin move, and then he picks up, I think, an assist on the next play. It was like a quick 7-0 run, and I was just like, nah, they're not slipping tonight. They're on their game. 
Uh, Luka Doncic is the eighth player in franchise history to record 45-plus points. It is Doncic's seventh game with 40-plus points, and all seven of his 40-point games have come with 10-plus assists. So he's not one-dimensional. Not that anyone here listening to this thought he was one-dimensional, but his performance, patently not one-dimensional. KP finished the game, like I said, 36-7. and seven. A fantastic performance from him. A career-high eight made three-pointers. Eight of 13 as well. Attempting nine in the first quarter, that's, inc that's incredible. But he was a flamethrower, so hey, if you got it, keep heat-checking yourself and wait until things cool down a little bit to actually expand out. Bobby Carella points out, the Mavericks are now 14-1 uh, all-time when scoring 140 points plus in regulation. Before last weekend, Dallas was 5-62 and 62 all time when allowing 130 plus points in regulation. Pelicans got 130 last night, but the Mavs have now won two such games in a row tonight and last Saturday against the Warriors. So, there you go. You take a you take a all-time franchise history snapshot and you show how part of it's just the the direction of the league, but you're trending in a direction where that doesn't have to be as ironclad the case. Other notes people kind of are curious about this. Jalen Brunson was last night's defensive player of the game. He is now the holder of the championship belt. Uh, that Carlisle said that was not an easy decision who was going to get that last night, but I think Brunson had a fantastic game and definitely deserves a little bit of love there. Mavericks PR says tonight marked, again, this is last night, uh, last night marked the 10th time in franchise history that two players each scored 35-plus points. The most recent instance prior to Doncic's 46 and Porzingis' 36 was on November 20th, 2013 against Houston when Monte Ellis scored 37 and Dirk scored 35. It's been a while. It has been a while. The Mavericks are now one and a half games back from the seven seed and two and a half back of the five seed. That's why I said as much of as bad as things were going, if you can actually build a little bit, whether you had to do a major trade, which maybe I still think you need a trade. I still think you need to do something different because this is not a championship ready team. So if you can make a big acquisition and improvement, do it. But the, the notion of, Hey man, we're out of this, just pack it in and tank. No, I, I always rejected that. There's no point in trying to do that. And so here you are in a situation now where because of the logjam that was the Western Conference, you're right back in the absolute thick of things, and it could not have happened at a better time. Last night was the first time through, so through three quarters, both Luka and KP had 30. It was the first time in the last 25 years that the Mavericks had a pair of 30-point scores through three quarters. Fantastic stuff there. KP's nine attempts from three in the first quarter was the most such attempts by any player across the league this year in a single quarter. Is that single quarter? Yeah, in any quarter. Uh, let's see, let's see. Luca and KP are the first pair of teammates born outside the United States to each score 35-plus points in a game. That's big time. That's really cool there. Uh, credit to ESP or NBA on ESPN for that tweet. Bobby Carrillo adds in, Mavericks are now 11-3 and three on the season when an offensive rating for a game is 110 or better. A season-long rating of 110 would rank 20th in the league this year. So it's not a crazy high bar to set. She's in the hall, but she's getting fussy again. Dallas is 9-0 and when scoring 118 per 100. 118 per game would currently rank second in the league. So... A lot of room to grow shows how if the offense is there, they're typically difficult to beat. Go figure. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. This is from Reese Conkle on Twitter. So we were talking about how the Mavericks three-point shooting, or sorry, Luca's three-point shooting. Time out one more time. We're going to get Harper back. You wanted to join Daddy for the home stretch, didn't you? That's fair. That's fair. Okay, so Reese Conkle on Twitter points out Luka Doncic, and we've talked about this a little bit, but he has the actual percentages. Luka's improvement in three-point shooting as the season has gone on. He is up to 32.3% on 
overall on the year. Uh, he's 30, he was 33% in January, so only a hair better than that, but is shooting 40% in February, 35% in 2021 overall. So his three-point shooting is definitely... Mm, you still got a little time before your nap. His three-point shooting is definitely trending up. I, he's by no means a sharpshooter, as you stumble. He's by no means a sharpshooter, but he is an acceptable three-point shooter. And when he's so lethal in his shooting in the mid-range, and especially when he gets to the rim, last night was another case of he can get whatever he wants. He's so lethal in those departments. He's so lethal in those departments that even just being a competent and acceptable three-point percentage shooter makes a world of difference. That even just being an acceptable percentage three-point shooter, like 35%, roundabout, would be a huge gain for his overall, you know, effectiveness. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Him working his way back into shape has certainly helped, but he's also built confidence in the actual shooting itself. So yeah, the Mavericks are on a nice streak here, four games. Very much love to see it. Does this indicate that they have fixed all the problems and that everything was an overreaction? I don't think so. I mean, you can say, hey, the wheels aren't falling completely off the bus at this point and this team can still build towards being a, a playoff team. And this team can still towards being a playoff team, but the indication that this team is ready-made and can make a deep playoff run, I'm not convinced of that yet. So something to keep an eye on, but hey, great win last night. Let's see if they can keep building on it. Shout out, by the way, to Tim Cato of The Athletic, who absolutely predicted, even, even going into these last four games, he literally called his shot with a four-game win streak. And damn if he wasn't right. After that first Golden State game, I would have assumed the wheels were off the bus and they weren't coming back. To his credit, he called a four-game win streak and the Mavericks did exactly that. But that's all my time for this video. I got to get this little lady some food and get her to sleep. Try and take that nap that you reject most mornings. But don't forget to like this video, drop a comment below, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect, and until next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Peace.